you don't understand human psychology you will never understand how human beings behave mm. and a leader should know how people are behaving mm. you can't just say you know my father is a doctor so i am a doctor another amazing episode of chanakya unscripted today we are going to discuss about chanakya seven secrets of leadership a very special book of sirs so welcome to this podcast thank you mansi so my very first question to you is there's a very famous saying leadership is permanent leaders are not permanent so could you please share your opinion on this a good organization country or even a company is the one where every generation has got good leaders but the challenge is leaders have to retire mm. let's say you take a company like let's say tatas or let's say birlas for that matter they go on for three four generations the thing is that every generation will require a kind of a leader he or she who will lead the organization but let's say he or she retires then what happens the next leader should also be good mm. and so the next leader and the so the next leader so the leadership can change but leadership and the quality of the organization should not change so yes you are right leaders change but leadership and the qualities of leaders should not change so talking about qualities chanakya had mentioned 36 qualities in arthashastra out of which you have spe- specified some qualities in this book could you please specify that yeah you are right arthashastra of kautilya or chanakya is a book of leadership mm. he is actually selecting leaders or potential leaders like chandragupta maurya and training them training them on what the first thing is that you should have the qualities mm. if you have the qualities you can develop those qualities yes. if you don't have those qualities you can still work on yourself and develop those qualities mm. in the artha shastra which i call a book of leadership and the training of a leader the 36 qualities given you can check artha shastra of course you have given some of these qualities in the book chanakya seven secrets of leadership so i would just take a few of them for the time being the first one the highest one is actually humility mm. the leader has to be humble believe me friends you know you must have also faced this the lot of leaders have the positional power mm. but after getting the position if they are not humble they will lose the leadership position today's generation that's not like dictators mm. people who command and say you know my way is the right way or you hit the highway <laughs> So it's very important that we have leadership qualities like humility. Correct. Then Chanakya talks about another leadership quality, which is called intelligent and dynamic. Mm. Lot of leaders are intelligent, but they are not dynamic. So they don't know how to put the plans into action. So plan out your work and work out your plan. So Chanakya definitely makes you an intelligent leader, but also a dynamic and actionable leader. The third quality, which is my favorite one, is open door policy. So what is open door policy? the ability to let anyone come and meet you that doesn't mean gate crash but you should be able to meet anybody and everybody let's say you are a business leader mm. you should be able to meet the customers mm. in fact the success of amazon is this quality in fact jeff boys always says this you know i take the customers feedback very seriously in fact he's got a mechanism where all the customers feedback himself So imagine for one of the richest men in the world how important it is to be in touch with the last person yes. so open door policy let the ideas come to you and again one more quality i would like to mention is not breaking a promise mm. leaders do over promising and do under delivery not good leadership quality better to promise less but deliver everything mm. so soch samajh ke boliyega as they say you know better to promise less and deliver more so it's very important that whatever you promise that you deliver so zindagi mein agar aapko leader banna hai so remember there are many qualities we just mentioned a few of them yes so leadership without training is very dangerous like you always tell us in the university as well so why do you emphasize on this the reason is that lot of people think that i can become a leader and then i don't require training mm. especially it happens with people who come from maybe second or third generation Mm. so you know maybe your fa- parents were already leaders maybe a political leader maybe a business leader or any other leader you know so you say okay listen i can become a leader i don't require any training but it's very dangerous because if you get the chair and you don't know what to do as a leader then the leadership position will also go therefore it's very very important like you get trained before you become a leader even if you are born in a leader's family a simple example be a doctor mm. let's say there's a doctor a very good doctor mm. his son or daughter can also become a doctor but they have to go through that whole 
uh, training of becoming a doctor they have to go to a medical college mm-hmm. get the training mm-hmm. you can't just say you know my father is a doctor so i'm a doctor <laughs> so why can't it happen in the political field mm-hmm. unfortunately many times it happens that you know a lot of politicians make the children as leaders nothing wrong in them if they have qualities they should be made a leader mm-hmm. but very dangerous to make them a leader without training mm-hmm. so training and then you become a leader is very good but no training and becoming a leader is dangerous okay so uh, like you said that you know every leader should have right mentors with them so how do they find these right mentors chanakya says is very clearly that the biggest problem for a leader is dharma sankat mm. what to do and what not to do mm. so if you look at all leaders whenever they are in a decision making position in our university we have a decision making mm. science as a subject yes. and that's not easy mm. what to do and what not to do but imagine if you have a mentor with you mm. okay he will tell you or she will tell you what to do and what not to do so when you are in dharma sankat you require a mentor but i always said other way around if you have a mentor you will never have dharma sankat correct so look at the very famous situation of bhagavad gita mm. arjuna a great warrior leader very skilled in fact he was the best in his generation but he had dharma sankat and he said i don't want to fight mm. fortunately he had a mentor in the name of shri krishna with him and he told him don't worry i will tell you what to do and what not to do so the strategies come from the mentor and the mentors will tell you what to do at what point of time now the next part of the question one so is about uh, how to select a mentor okay. so there are three things that you should remember hmm. never have only one mentor why should you have only one mentor if you are fortunate have multiple mentors also but choose your mentors call carefully second quality of a good mentor is that he should be a subject matter expert hmm. i can't ask a history question to a geography teacher hmm. so i should know which question i'm asking to the mentor correct so the quality of the mentor that he should be a subject matter expert the third he or she should not have a spirit should have a spiritual base and should not be selfish okay suppose you are having a leader under you and hmm. you are the mentor hmm. you can actually use the leader to get your work done never do that so the leader should be selfless the leadership mentor should also be selfless so what are the qualities you look out for a good mentor number 1 have multiple mentors so that's not a problem today we get lot of people but the experienced people should be consulted and the third thing is that check whether he or she is selfish or selfless mm-hmm. only a selfless and spiritual person can be a good mentor wow so chanakya was you know supposed to be a polymath he is known as a polymath and it is said that he understands psychology so do you think it is important for leaders to understand human psychology before they take up any leadership role very important in fact if you don't understand human psychology you will never understand how human beings behave mm. and a leader should know how people are behaving mm. and therefore my guru swami tejumanan ji once told me before you learn artha shastra learn samaj shastra oh. and manas shastra Oh. so three things so leadership can be in any position but you should know what the society wants mm. samaj shastra sociology and chanakya was a sociologist also he was a you know person who taught social science to everyone his uh, students but very important manas shastra i am not talking about academic psychology courses which most of the people are doing today mm. to become a psychologist mm. or a practicing you know consultant for psychological or mental health cases no to understand how human beings behave for example a leader understands let's say political leader mm. that my whole culture of my particular place is you know during this particular time mm. everybody is going to be celebrating a festival mm. for example we have navratri coming up yes so in navratri especially in major cities in uh, maharashtra in mumbai and in gujarat there's a culture of dandi and garba yes So imagine that leader understand social psychology everybody is going to dance Correct. and you will be surprised if you go around the navratri time you can see big big politicians organizing it mm. what is the reason because they understand this is where the crowd wants and they want to come and dance okay, right. so yes you want to be a political leader but you should understand samaj shastra society so you know all politicians know where the people are moving towards in certain times so be diwali dasara or ganpati even going back to ganpati you saw that you know all political leaders were active during the festival so that samaj shastra but manas shastra different people come to you and everybody has got different demands So let's say there's a simple man coming to you. He may require some money, but you should understand that before you ask for it. Mm. Some people want position, mm. some people want power, some people want something else. So even before they ask, if you can understand what is going on in the mind, you can be very effective. So friends, please understand that psychology is not just an academic subject, but the ability to understand the person before he or she speaks it out. 
से फिर लीडर प्रॉब्लम आने से पहले ही समझ में आ जाता है so like is, is it like you know uh, you see what is not being shown you hear what is not being said right are you trying to say something absolutely. like that absolutely the same definition we talk about in anvik shikhi yes the ability to see what is not shown mm. to read in between the lines and listen to what is not being said okay lot of people are not expressive but you have to be understanding and that comes by understanding human psychology wow so it is said that you know any leader particularly a ceo is also a, a meant to be a coach i mean how does that relate into leadership in fact is other way around okay. if you want to be a good ceo you have to be a good coach also and why is that there's a reason for that because let's say ceo is the number one position hmm. but what happens again the first question that you ask you know the ceo will also retire one day oh, okay. so what is happening he has to create the level 2 hmm. among his people so he has to be a coach also hmm. so you may have a lot of experience power but you know train somebody else to take up your position lot of ceos don't like it they say now if the other person becomes better than me then what will happen to me i always say the other way around if somebody is better than you you can also get promoted yes <laughs> so ceos i always advise my ceo friends clients students one thing every day one hour please spend with your team mentoring them every day every day and it's not difficult because if you're in office for 8 hours let's say One hour is not a small thing. Correct. I mean, it can be managed, right? Mm-hmm. So my suggestion is, imagine you multiply it by, let's say, uh, five days a week. So you spend mm-hmm. five hours in mentoring, and the people will start trusting you a lot. And you don't have to spend time with only the same person again and again. For example, let's say many companies, you know, CEOs have five, let's say, departmental heads. Mm-hmm. One is a finance head, one is a marketing head, one could be an IT head, one could be a social media head. and one should be maybe let's say uh, you know a head of uh, maybe sales hmm. so you can call everybody and spend one hour please understand it's reverse mentoring also oh. when you sit down with the finance guy he may tell you the latest trends correct when you're s- sitting with a social media expert like what you did today <laughs> you actually told me so you may feel that you know i am mentoring you but other when you also mentored me right. saying that we should be on uh, vlogs we should do more po- podcasts so look forward friends you know when you are mentoring somebody it's a great opportunity to get mentored also thank you ma'am thank you sir so we spoke about swami that is leadership we spoke about amatya ceo now coming to janpad i have seen lot of startups fail because they don't target the right kind of clients and the customers what is chanakya's perspective in this it's very easy mm. again if you understand human psychology mm. but if you don't understand human psychology your customers will also go away So, you know, I'll tell you, uh, says this very clearly. Praja sukhe sukham Prajanam cha hite hitam. It's a very powerful, very very powerful psychological statement. If the praja is happy, hmm. then you are happy. Hmm. If the praja is not happy, you cannot be happy. How do you do that in the business world? It's called customer centric approach. Hmm. So if your customers are happy, then the company will do well. And this formula has been applied by Amazon. Hmm. If you listen to the videos and interviews of jeff boys she always says ours is the most customer centric company mm. so if you look at amazon you are buying something there is something called a wish list mm. then you don't have the money or the time or the will to buy now correct. but you put it on the wish list amazon knows customer psychology correct and tomorrow it will always pop up and saying that okay this product is available on this discount so that is being customer centric but customer centric it is not just about making money mm. it's also giving them the experience So many CEOs don't understand how to make the customers happy. Mm. I'll give one simple example. You know, customers can give you feedback, good or bad. Mm. You should be able to take it in the right spirit. Correct. I remember I had gone to a shop to buy a shirt. So I wanted to buy some formal shirts. I went to a shop and I was selecting. And you'll be surprised. One lady came in when I was doing my you know window shopping. Not yet decided. <laughs> I was just discussing which material, what is the range, and all those things. I was just doing. I had not decided. Mm. One lady comes in with a bag of shirts. and she st- start shouting at the owner of the shop and she said you know yesterday i took this you know but it's not fitting and the button tota hua hai so you know can you replace it and can you believe that particular shop owner said i can't and she like again started shouting that it's not one or two i bought 10 shirts okay i'm only returning two of them hmm. because it's not fitting so please replace it no it's your problem now you know what happened two things anyway that lady will never come back he's not that customer but i did not purchase he lost two customers because looking at her i started feeling that okay if this is the way he behaves to a customer tomorrow if i take the shirt any shirt from that shop and i come back and say you know please replace it for whatever reason 
he may tell no. Mm-hmm. So many times what happens when you say no to one customer, you are actually losing another customer also. Correct. And what does Amazon do? Why do I tell about Amazon again and again? Because I've seen that yourself mm-hmm. and most of you must have experienced. Mm-hmm. Suppose you have a problem. They immediately say, you know, take the money back or replace it or keep it. Mm-hmm. We do not charge for you, right? Mm-hmm. So it is not about money, but making the customer happy and delightful. Remember one thing, Chanakya says every time the customer may not be right. Mm. But to make him feel that you are right is a leadership role. Wow. Every time the customer may not be right. For example, customer can tell you know that you are not doing this right or mm. you can decide. Mm. But make him feel like okay, fine. I listen to you, I accept you. In fact, Chanakya says that her praja sahi nahi hota because every praja or uh, the citizens may not follow what is called as Praja Dharma. Mm. Like for example, many people don't pay taxes. Yeah. That is not right. And they come and demand from the government. Are you have not done your duty. But as a Raja Dharma, you have to listen to everyone. Mm. So whether he's a criminal or a good citizen, you have to listen to them. Your Raja Dharma is being open to everyone. Mm. But your Praja Dharma is to be uh, committed to the country and do your duty. Correct. And word of mouth is very powerful. Like, you know, that's an organic way of marketing your business as well. Yes. So, yes, customers are very important. And today with the internet, everybody can put about their reviews openly on the internet also. Exactly. And it takes, you know, negativity spreads more, faster than positivity. So, you know, yeah. Mansipra, I've been very fortunate. Thanks to all of you are listening. If you go and check on Google, the reviews that we get, it's amazing. Yes. So, I say other way around also. If you are actually genuinely committed to the work that you're doing, not only negativity spreads fast, even positivity is also spreads fast. Yes. So I've been fortunate that a lot of people are putting good reviews. Thanks to all of you. Watch it, like <laughs> it and also subscribe to it. Thank you. <laughs> so Swami Amatya Jan, but now coming to Durga. In those days there was no internet, but now we have internet. So how can you relate Durga in today's times? See Durga in the olden day, what Chanakya was talking about is a fortified city. Hmm. It's like building a fort where external people cannot attack you. Yes. So that's a strong Durga or fort. Mm. But inside also you should be strong. Mm. You know, in the uh, cities, if you go where there are olden forts like mm. Kota, mm. or if you go to Aurangabad, mm. or you go to Hyderabad, there are forts inside. If you go to study them, inside there was a complete habitat. Mm. There were water bodies, there were houses. You know, the king used to stay inside the fort. So in today's generation, if you look at an office as a Durga, mm. let's say we are sitting in a beautiful office. Yes. Not only outside it should be good, inside also it should be good. So first part is the design. You can mm. see the Saptanga design here. Yes. Not only that, the chairs that you select, the design, the, the kind of air conditioning that you have, that's very physical. But the other side is also equally true. You should have good internet connection. Mm. Imagine I'm sitting over there, I'm sitting on my laptop or mobile, but there is no Wi-Fi. Mm. What is the point? I can't be productive. You know, when we were young, that time there was no Wi-Fi and all those things, but electricity was a problem. Imagine going to office and out of eight hours, six hours there is no electricity. Mm. So what kind of a Durga is it? Today we say, you know, today Wi-Fi is a minimum requirement. Mm. You can work from anywhere. Correct. So digital, but very important part of Durga is also the culture that you bring in mm. to the organization. People should be happy. Mm. I always follow this formula, your employees should be happy and healthy. Mm. Okay, so please think about it. How do you make your Durga soft? Culturally also better. So soft is yes, your Wi-Fi, your mm. connections, mm. your laptop, they should be working fine. In the digital world today, you also need to have good activity on the social media. Mm. So it's not about saying that, you know, many of us Wi-Fi hai, but if you are having, let's say, a social media account on Instagram or a LinkedIn or a YouTube, how effectively are you using it? I know I have traveled so many countries in the world. People have actually watched me on the internet more than they actually watch me. And thanks to all of you who create these videos. So friends, Never limit yourself to the digital world, to a physical office, but the physical office should be equipped to handle good digital platform also. Correct. So I'm sure a lot of viewers don't know this, but this, your office, Chanakya Anvikshi Private Limited is based on the seven pillars. So how did this idea come up? So I request all of you to please come to my office and meet our team. <laughs> we have a wonderful team. Okay. So it's a small office in Mumbai, getting an office itself is a big thing. Yes. Fortunately, we have a good physical office and my guru actually came and inaugurated this office. Wow. Now, two, three things about this particular office. Mm. This is based out of Mumbai, as many of you know. You can check our website, yes. Chanakya Anvikshi Private Limited. Yes. And the second thing is that even though it's a small office, it is actually designed by one of my students. So, our MALS batch, Seema Puranik, and she's an engineer and an interior designer. 
and i like females <laughs> who are actually having the leadership positions <laughs> so she took lot of time to design this office i'll tell you something about this office you can check our videos also yes this office even though is small is divided into seven parts mm. the saptang the saptam in seven anga means part yes. so what you are seeing right now is my cabin <laughs> which has got the saptang model but there are six more cabins and each of them is been designed uniquely yes so if you come to the reception area that's a different design the, the place where all my team sits that's different there got a bhagavad gita concept in the reception area we got a concept of anvikshiki yes. with the lighting of you know diya in uh, the area where all the team sits we got the yoga karma su kaushalam so it's a bhagavad gita concept the third one is actually a conference room and you'll be surprised if you look up you'll actually find a om so it's a thinking area mm-hmm. the fourth is an open area where you know we have nothing you know in bombay every inch counts but my designer my student seema said no you should have open space believe me if you look at that space it may look unutilized but you got lot of positive energy the fourth one is our ceo pranav patel his cave in and that design is of a temple so if you have seen his videos and you will find him doing so that's a different concept the fifth one uh, is actually my wife's cave so the sixth one it's where you know she is a bharatanatyam teacher and dancer so her concept is actually very feminine and of course my office is about saptanga you got the chess concept over here yes so imagine one office seven designs <laughs> and of course you got the swami amarth janapada durga kosha danda mitra here also so please whenever you create your office and i always suggest everybody to have a physical office you can be small but you can be beautiful so create beauty and the last part whenever you look out from my cave in you will be surprised that you will see a good forest view and a mountain view yes we are lucky that instead of being in a metro city we got god's creation and man's creation so man we have designed this office but we can actually see the mountains which is you know the forest part of bombay and so we are lucky to have a good view so remember whenever you create an office look at all aesthetics productivity and make it a happy office and in such a blissful moment we are shooting a podcast in this office yeah the first time we are doing <laughs> thanks to you thank you sir thank you so coming back to the saptang the fifth pillar kosha i remember you te- teaching us in the university that any entrepreneur or leader has to first understand the financial acumens before getting into wealth creation so why do you emphasize on this remember one thing we are talking about business hmm. the dharma the duty of a businessman is to create wealth hmm. A lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, young generation, college-going kids, have this problem. Mm. Let's start a company, mm. and then they get stuck. Mm. And I have seen, you know, reports telling that ninety-five percent, ninety-five percent of the startups fail. Yes. Why? Not because the idea was bad, mm. but the idea could not be converted into money. Mm. And you know what they do? They actually put their own money, or they maybe even get money from the investors, like angel investors. but that is not enough hmm. so i always say that you know uh, don't fall in love with your idea get mentored in your idea wow okay so if you have a good idea take a mentor he will tell you or she will tell you how to work on it hmm. but finally the crux of it is that did you create cash flows money hmm. if you don't have that what is the point i have seen lot of people being calling themselves so serial entrepreneurs hmm. they start one thing start another thing third thing and then when you look back if all of them are successful it is okay but they actually fail in one business try another business fail in that try the third one fail in that then i say why is the problem because they don't know how to make money from their ideas mm. so it's very very important that you develop the financial acumen and chanakya says about kosha the kosha should not be full mm. it should be overflowing mm. kosha means treasury let's yes. say you have a treasury box yes. and it can take let's say 100 coin mm. say so don't fill in 100 coins it should have more mm. so good business is the one which can invest into other businesses wow so it's very important that you understand financial acumen i've seen lot of communities in india the gujarati community the marwadi community the kachi community now what they have is that they may not be highly educated mm. of course they are educated now lot of the children are going abroad studying and coming back but they have something called as financial acumen in their dna mm. so they can say they say hindi mein kehte hain aankdon mein baat karo mm. they are very good in their numbers mm. unfortunately we have lost the strength in our india mm. that we are good in maths we are good in numbers we are the wealthiest country in the world because we knew how to manage our finance and chanakya was telling us how to make our company our country very rich mm. so develop the financial acumen get mentored by people who have made money themselves in mm. the ethical way mm. and you will also develop that financial acumen so a lot of startups they want to be mentored okay but probably they don't have awareness or right mentors uh, in this case what would you advise them 
see there are three steps that you can follow hmm. number one is that if you get a mentor directly you are lucky hmm. so you know and let me tell you today's generation is very easy hmm. to get a mentor from your field hmm. for example you are a startup let's yes. say in the edutech field hmm. okay you just sit on your linkedin account hmm. and just search for you know experienced people in the edutech field and today you don't have to go through a secretary to get an appointment Correct. you can just uh, you know connect on linkedin and send him or her a request Correct. that's her I would like to come and meet you. And let me tell you, nine out of ten of them like to actually mentor the young generation. So the simplest thing is to get an expert, and there are no barriers. Use technology, use social media, get in touch with them, get a connect a request. And let me tell you, I have so many young boys and girls who come here. I never tell now. So it is very very important that we actually connect to the real mentors directly, if possible, through mm. some contact mm. or through some reference. Mm. If you don't get a direct mentor, there's a second way of doing it. you know be surrounded by people who actually are successful business people okay okay, okay. so they may not mentor you but there are lot of programs that happens where you can go network with them listen to them like lot of conferences happen hmm. today you know uh, there will be seven eight experts who are speaking on the dais you hmm. can go and participate hmm. in such conferences or seminars hmm. and listen to their views so you get indirect mentoring hmm. the third thing that you can do is to listen to their podcasts their videos read their books correct look at the youtubes Correct. So again, that's not the best option, mm. but I would say that at least that is available. Exactly. So let's say I want to get uh, mentored by Narayan Murthy. Mm. I'm just giving an example. Mm. Believe me, our team actually got in touch with Narayan Murthy and he called us. So there is a movie that we made called Chanakya Speaks. You yes. can Google it, yes. where we actually got a chance to go to Narayan Murthy. He invited us mm. to his house, mm. and we video shot the whole thing for the film. Mm. So imagine, I our team wrote to him and he said yes. I know some of my students who actually got mentored directly by Ratan Tata. Mm. Yeah, so never think that you know mentors are not available. In fact, they are available. You don't approach them. Right. So first thing is approach them directly. Mm. Second, mm. if you don't, simple, you know, go to conferences. You will see a lot of social media and post about to this conference, that conference. Go and physically participate. Correct. If not, you know, there are so many books. Like you know, I was fortunate to read books of Narendra Murthy before I met him. Wow. So read books, listen to the videos, and today WhatsApp and so many other platforms are there. Yes. So mentors are available. You be available for mentors. Wow. <laughs> so talking about the six pillar thunder, it is said that team training is very important. But uh, even startups fail when they don't train, train their teams. Even lot of big organizations, the top management is getting trained, but the team is not getting trained. So what is your perspective on this? See, there are three types of companies. Mm. The first is startups. Mm. The second is let's say you know SME sector, hmm. and third is very organized corporates or multinationals. Yes, I never find the problem with big companies because hmm. they have budgets, they have an HR team, yes. so they will organize training programs, mentoring. Today, mentoring is a buzzword in HR fraternity. Hmm. So, but they are big companies. What if you are an SME? Hmm. Let's say you got ten, fifteen people. You are a small business. You hmm. don't have an HR team. Hmm. It's okay. Hmm. You be a mentor. Wow. So, if you are the CEO of a company with ten, fifteen people, spend time with them, talk to them. You have to take the initiative. so don't let it you know wait for a time when the hr is formed and then you start training or mentoring mm. you are the mentor first and the last especially is the startups i'll tell you one thing you know startups have this big problem that you know lot of team members leave them mm. when they get a job i mm. said you know the best way to build your team is to spend time with them mm. when you are a startup you have a lot of time mm. maybe you don't have money in the initial stages but afterwards you know what happen when work becomes bigger you may not have the time mm. so spend time with your team be transparent with them take feedbacks so i would say that in anybody at any level be it big small or medium whichever level you are you can build your team but the first thing is that you should have time commitment to spend time with the team and mentor them Correct. so you are the first mentor to become a great team leader so it's like uh, leaders creating more leaders leaders should create more leaders leaders should create a- absolutely so coming back to the seventh pillar mitra so it is said that you know we are the average of five people we surround ourselves with and chanakya says you should have uh, advisors who should not have self interest so how do you find such people no well, as i again i told you there are lot of selfless people yes. i'll give you a formula mm. try to get mentors who are above 50 or 60 years of old <laughs> and then the reason why because yes. number one after fifty they don't have any selfish interest. Hmm. Generally in Indian society such people are semi retired. Hmm. Or after sixty they are fully retired. Correct. They have the time, they have the experience, but nobody actually values them. Hmm. I always tell my clients, you know, if you don't have time or money to pay to very experienced people, hmm. make a list of people who are retired in that field. Wow. So it's easy. 
नो बडी अप्रोच दैम वो तो बोलते हैं घर वाले भी उनको पूछते नहीं <laughs> They will give you free advice, and yeah. they feel you know my experience is valued. Correct. So the best way to get mentored is go to people who are beyond that age group. If you are taking somebody who is in thirties or forties, they may be very busy. Mm. They may not have the time. Mm. So as long as those mentors are uh, having more time and healthy, they will mentor you. Wow. So second last question: A lot of women leaders, uh, you know, aspire to be entrepreneurs. Uh, do you think Saptam can help them? In fact, I always say in my lectures that Swami can be Swami Ni also, <laughs> and Saptanga model is not gender biased. Yes. So a lot of people say Chana ke only promoted Chandra Gupta Maurya. No, he had a lot of women leaders also. So Saptanga is relevant not only to male but female and also to transgender. Wow. So why not? Tomorrow generation we can even have transgender leaders. Hmm. So it's beyond genders. Okay. So last question. So do you think uh, by any chance our honorable prime minister has applied Saptang? According to me yes not directly but indirectly so let me put it how i look at because i had the chance of meeting him many times yes and i believe that you know he's directly or indirectly following chanakya now look at the saptanga model yes. swami himself believes as a leader that he has to improve yes. and you can listen to so many of his speeches sometimes he speaks in local languages mm. you know if you go to kerala he speaks a little bit in malayalam tuta puta okay of course when he is in gujarati only speaks in gujarati when he goes to tamil nadu at least at times yes. in fact that is a quality that chanakya said that swami should be ever learning wow. and the more languages you learn it's good amate is got a good team of cabinet ministers hmm. and he chooses the cabinet ministers himself amate janapada he always talks in his speeches about 1.3 billion people meri praja you know especially his speeches to the public are very profound swami amate durga he is building ports infrastructures So you can see that you know our roads, yes. highways, everything. Yes. And he's also a digital person, so mm. digital infrastructure. <laughs> Kosha, mm. I think uh, very clearly is focused on making India an economic capital. Yes. And not only directly but indirectly using tools like digital India. Yes. Of course, he's already third largest economy of the world. So Kosha is his focus. Danda, you can see him going to all the army camps, navy camps, and especially on Diwali, you will see him going to some army place, very remote, maybe in a Himalaya or somewhere in a forest. that shows the importance and we recently even had ins vikrant so is important to army and army is also getting the confidence we have a good swami danda and mitra foreign policies so one of his cabinet ministers is of course jay shankar ji who is a foreign policy maker and going and you know we are one of the most happening countries in the world because of our mitra so yes according to me this uh, prime minister is definitely working on the saptanga model he may not call it a saptanga model but i believe i can see it from a saptanga angle Wow, that's a very different perspective. So, uh, one last thing I would want you to ask is any message for our viewers who want to attend Saptang course. Please attend it. It's going to be live. Yes. But before that, if you want to know what is Chanakya, please look at our videos available on our Chanakya Anvikshiki website. Lot of videos are there. Hours of videos are there. So, Saptang model has transformed my life. Imagine I have an office based on Saptang model. You can create your life based on Saptang model. Yes. So, whether you want to be a businessman or no, the Saptang model applies to everyone. So, don't think it's only about entrepreneurship. It's about being a leader in whichever field you want. So, please attend the course. I am going to be personally there along with Pranav sir. So, yes, a three-day program live. It is not a recorded program. And you know, uh, I look forward for all of you participating. And believe me, Chanakya has got that whole wisdom which is relevant in our generation also today. Yes. So that's my message. Thank you so much. I hope you love today's podcast. If you want to attend this course, there's a link in the description. And please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much.